Talk 49. I'm going to call this interview Black and White Snapping. My guest takes photographs. Nicholas Stanick, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you very much. Nicholas, you take photographs, mainly black and white. Why is black and white so important for you? Black and white uh, photography is important for me because uh, it is easier to handle for me and also the impression of black and white pictures more, let's say, beautiful or you can imagine more things into the picture. So you can read more into the picture. That's true. Some people say black and white is a timeless way of taking photos. Well, what do you say to that? Of course, it is timeless because many famous photographers are uh, in the 30 or 40 or 50 cent, uh, decade of the last century and they take, uh, they made uh, black and white pictures because it was necessary at that time for the newspapers and the magazines. Colorful or color photography wasn't so uh, so up to date as it is now. You mentioned famous photographers. Are there one or two that really influenced you? Uh, I would say influence uh, influences came from let's say fashion photographer like Horst P. Horst or George Hunningham Hume and uh, other uh, photography I prefer was uh, or is taking pictures of trains and there are a group of uh, Austrian photographer which made very nice pictures of trains. That's very interesting Nikolaus, taking pictures of trains. Tell us a little bit about this. Uh, I would uh, call it train spotting. Train spotting. Okay. Train spotting that uh, you uh, search for a special type of locomotive mostly steam locomotive or old uh, electric uh, locomotives and this is like collecting things so you take pictures of this special type of, of engine. Is it easy taking photographs of steam engines? Um, you can't tell an engine to smile. How do you work this one out? To take pictures of uh, trains, you have to be very exact in timing and with a very short exposure, you have to be careful to, to uh, make a correct picture of trains. So you have this element of speed involved, element of power involved. How does it feel seeing these great big trains coming towards you and you've got to take the picture at exactly the right second? I have to do so. It has to be exactly at this moment when the train comes around a cord or a band and you want to uh, catch it at the right moment. So the train's telling you when to take the picture, not the other of way course, around. Of course, it is. How does this compare to taking pictures old industry, factories, people. Do, do you take pictures of people as well? Uh, I like to take pictures of, of people, uh, let's say, in the family. Uh, but I also made pictures of, of old factories or how they say at these days, the lost places and uh, you have 
to take another equipment with you. It's a bigger uh, camera and it's another way to imagine what should be on the picture then, uh, let's say, when you make train spotting. So taking photographs of old factories and so on is an art in itself. You say you need a special camera, special equipment. Um, is this equipment big or is it small? Or uh, It should be, or I prefer a big or a very big camera <laughs> and I have to carry it with a, a very heavy weight and to take a, a stativ, I would say. A, a tripod. A, a tripod, you have to yeah. take a tripod with you and, and prepare these pictures mostly on a big uh, plate. It's interesting, you, different kinds of pictures, trains, factories, the trains are very, very fast. The factories are standing still, so you must walk around and decide where the best picture is. And yet people, does it help to know the people you're taking pictures of? Or can you take pictures of strangers as well, which are just so good, just as good? Oh, okay, if it is, a, a, let's say, a party or a, in this way, uh, of course the people are, uh, they knew that they were, uh, that uh, pictures were made of them. Okay. That's no problem. And the pictures are good? I think mostly uh, they are also funny if you have pictures of a party at home or somewhere. Okay, so tell me something, um, these fo taking photos is an art, um, you take black and white photos, how easy is it still getting the, um, the paper and the film and the chemicals you need to develop these pictures? It changes, uh, it changed in the last uh, years uh, because of, of the uh, other systems of, of photography like uh, like uh, mobile pictures and so on. So uh, there are special shops also here in Vienna. You can buy nearly everything which are needed for for developing black and white. Developing your own pictures needs an eye. To begin with, you need the right eye to take the right picture. You have to know what to look for. When you develop your pictures, how does it feel when you see the picture appearing on the paper? Is this still exciting? It is exciting, of course, because uh, it also uh, interesting how the grey tones comes out from the white paper and the turn to the exactly imagination you had when you take the picture. So you still get a, a wow feeling when you see the right picture coming out of the darkness, so to say. If I didn't make a mistake by developing, it is a, a nice feeling. But sometimes you have many pictures you, you have to throw away. Okay, so it's, it's still a question of luck, but experience luck, maybe. It is experience because I uh, develop pictures for a long time. So you've been doing it for a long time, yeah, I can understand. Once you've got the pictures, what, what, do, you, what do you do with them? Where, where do you hang them? Do you have them in exhibitions or just hang them up at home? No. I don't want to make exhibition, it's too, too, too difficult. Uh, I give it to a frame and hang it up in our corridor or in the room. Wow. Everything has a beginning, everything has a start. When did you first start taking pictures, Nicolas? I started taking pictures when I was in school. Okay. Very good. And how old, roughly, were you? I think it was uh, at school when I was about 12 years old, like that. And the ultimate question is, Nicolas, what was your first camera? Oh, let's think of 
Uh, the first uh, camera I took from my mother, it was a 6 to 6 uh, centimeter Zeiss Econ. Well, so you started with a good camera. And uh, what, what camera do you use now when you're going around taking pictures of trains and things like this? It depends. Uh, taking pictures of train, I, had, uh, I took a smaller um, camera which are very accurate in, 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 in the exposure. And what camera is this? To, this to is be uh, <laughs> the brand is Nikon. Nikon, yeah. Yeah. And for, let's say, for people or portraits, I take a very big one is uh, from the brand Sina. It has very large uh, negatives. Wow. So really a perfect understanding of light is also important for your photography too. What is the best time of day for taking me? Let's say I prefer a sunny day, but it's not uh, the normal way to get the best grey tones in a picture. I do not prefer a flash. So it depends on, on, on time and the motive I want to take. You work traditionally. Have you ever considered going digital with this great hobby of yours? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Digital is uh, another way, a, a very quick way to, to get to the pictures and to, uh, to give it away. That's the uh, very big advantage of, of digital photography. Fine. And one very last question, Nikolaus, Nikolaus Spanik. Is there still one picture that's waiting to be taken? One Wunsch build, maybe? Uh, that's, this question is, is very difficult to say. Maybe uh, I will prefer to take a famous or a picture of, of a famous person that could be a, okay. an advantage. Yeah. So in the meantime, your life and your pictures are surprises waiting to happen. Is there any other better hobby you can think of than taking photographs? Uh, let's say other hobbies, of course. Uh, I listen to music and uh, and also play a little bit on the, on my guitar or on the piano. That's one, and also uh, doing something, repairing uh, and maintenance at home, like that one. Okay, but photography is number one, I would imagine. It takes very much time. How much time do you give to photography? Uh, let's say, um, when you exactly ask this, I would say, let's say about five to ten hours a week. Five to ten hours a week. So that's a many, many photos you've taken and you're going to carry on taking photos. So in the meantime, Thank you very, very much, Nicholas Stanick, for a very interesting short talk about your photography. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Talk 49. 49. 49. 49.